Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Willcast, the podcast with the most creative name in the world. Thank you for tuning in, subscribing, commenting, liking, all that good stuff that I appreciate as always. Today, Frink's Movement TV, you're with us. How's it going? It's going really well, Patrick. Thank you so much for the invitation. And let's hope that this fourth time is going to actually work. Yes, this is probably the most trouble I've had shooting a podcast so far. This is the fourth time, just to the listeners that uh, are not aware, this is the fourth time we're trying to to record this. So let's hope this time goes smoothly. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Um, Eric, thank you for coming on. Again, I've been looking forward to talk to you. Uh, thank you so much for the invitation. Uh, really appreciate it. It's always, you know, very, very nice to be invited to to podcasts or to like any sort of um, shows. So I really appreciate it, and uh, I I hope our discussion is going to be very interesting for for some people. I hope so too. One of the typical first things I like to ask people about, um, especially fitness people, when they come on my podcast, is how they start their fitness journey. So what got you interested in fitness? Mm, So whenever I get this question, it's kind of for me, um, because I've already appeared on some podcasts in the past. So I've been on Fitness FAQs podcast and also on uh, Strength and Skill podcast. Yeah, like a couple of podcasts where I've been asked about my background when it comes to training. And I, I'm always, I, I always worry that uh, my answers will be like inconsistent, but let's, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try to, you know, uh, take, take some of my memories uh, as accurately as I possibly can. So if I remember correctly, it's 2013, 14, and I'm, uh, and what happened was um, before I was playing tennis uh, as, uh, as a child, um, and my passion for tennis was kind of declining, I guess. Mm, but since I was in middle school and since that's kind of like the, the, the period where you start being interested in physical training and in just being in a good shape, uh, that's when I started uh, my first sort of strength and conditioning type of uh, training. And that was um, dumbbell training at home with my dad for like a year. Um, I saw really good progress with that, uh, but obviously it was pretty, it, it was not any very scheduled. I mean, it was scheduled because I still have my notes that, uh, that I have from that time uh, from years ago, but it was nothing very serious. And uh, one day I, I just uh, stumbled across some videos online, specifically the, uh, the Dennis Minin transformation video. Uh, which really inspired me to change the pursuit uh, of my training to more body weight calisthenics based training. And when I did, when I did, I uh, started just uh, working on that. It was obviously very small steps, very small beginnings, humble beginnings. Uh, I set up some first goals of mine were like muscle up and handstand, if I remember correctly. and I also quickly realized how difficult they are and how difficult it is to 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 pursue them because uh, the the progress was not linear. Uh, even though these skills we would consider now are not any advanced skills, right? People are doing crazy mm-hmm. stuff these days. Yeah. But uh, it, it's like the entry level. But I guess with the current knowledge at that time and also with uh, my level on the physical training journey. Um, it was a challenge and so I, but it happened that I was very inspired and motivated with that. It was very fun type of training. Um, and it got me to the place where I am today. Um, so it's been a lot of years of training, um, and, uh, I've been going back and forth. I had ups and downs, like with everything, uh, there were injuries, there were, you know, some, um, sudden losses of like motivation, passion, obviously. But till now, I I can proudly say that I'm still working on some things and I'm still training. Mm. So uh, that is a brief representation of my background, I guess, uh, with 
training and uh, and yeah maybe it's uh, maybe you know maybe it's something that most people are going through so it's n not that spectacular but i guess that's you know that that's what happened i definitely think a lot of people who do calisthenics have started weightlifting beforehand that that was the case with me i i weightlifted for a few years nothing very serious i didn't really know much about the human anatomy how you know different exercises work different muscles i just did whatever pretty much and then i saw um a video of christian nilsson who has one of the biggest um body transformations in calisthenics on youtube and that video just sparked my interest in calisthenics so much so yeah i definitely relate to to the story of starting to lift weight maybe dumbbells a bit that sort of stuff yeah, it won't, I just want to say that I also saw this video back then um, and it was also a very inspiring video for me. Um, so, uh, yeah, I specifically, like, I remember his name. So, um, you know, so, so so I just like reminded myself. But yeah, it was pretty, uh, pretty inspiring video at that mm -hmm. time uh, for me to watch. And uh, the one that also, you know, spiked my interest more into developing some uh, other things uh, especially i think um with the yeah i i think uh that like the bar stuff the bar stuff was what i uh really um got inspired in watching that video the bar stars you say no 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 like i'm not f talking about bar stars i'm talking about the bar stuff I'm talking oh, about okay. like, things mm. on the bar specifically because I had like many different people that I followed for mm. different kinds of um, calisthenics um, skills mm. and uh, not only skills but also education and I remember that just like this video sparked my my interest into muscle ups and mm. doing like more you know fun routines on on the bars. Yeah. Okay, I see. It must be really cool to. I mean, for me, I, I watched fis fitness FAQs, I watched Austin Dunham, Christian Nilsson. Those were some of the big ones that I watched um, starting calisthenics. And for you, you've linked up with a lot of these OG calisthenics people. It must be really cool to talk to these people after, I mean, I assume you've watched at least some of them uh, in your calisthenics journey. Yeah, yeah, like, uh, like I said on the, on the fitness FAQs podcast, it was really amazing to be able to like talk with Daniel mm -hmm. uh, in person, like in person, in remote, let's yeah. say. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it was very, very fun because like I remember still when I started training, you know, like the, the very first beginnings of my training, um, which was quite a while, while ago, you know, like I've been even watching his videos like with my dad on TV, Oh wow! you know, as a, <laughs> as a kid that just started training. And so having, you know, like him ask me some questions and stuff was very nice to see like the evolution over the years. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I, from the nature of what I'm doing, I, I have a pleasure to, to talk with many people that I followed in the past, which I'm very grateful for. I mean, it's, it's, it's no wonder why people want to talk to you, man. Um, something I want to get into is, is your content is very high quality. It's very enjoyable to watch. And the analysis that you do are so deep and very thought of. It's, it's very impressive. Is, is filmmaking something you've, you've been interested in or always? Yeah. Like many people ask me about that, um, with, with editing, it's one of these things because I like when it comes to training, I also started pursuing this more in a more of like school system. So uh, I'm a fourth year currently like finishing fourth year of physiotherapy. Mm, nice. Um, but when it comes to filmmaking or like video editing, uh, I had some, you know, like um, it, it's it's one of those things that I just do completely like myself mm. you know like mm. i started from from the scratch learning myself and the like i had never like even considered any sort of formal education in that or like courses 
uh, even though like I could probably benefit from that, but I just think that at this time it's not like the best uh, usage of my time. Uh, but it, when I started that, I did not know that I, that it's going to become such a big passion of mine. Mm. You know, at the time, editing was kind of like my favorite thing to do. Like it, in the past, it was training. Right now, it's editing. And now, for example, I'm working on the project that is taking a lot of time. Uh, I'm currently um, at the fifth month of just you know like educating myself and writing, and I had like. N I did not even touch, you know, like the the editing program in five months while working on this project, and it already had, you know, like negative implications on my mental health. Uh. So, I, so, you know, like editing is something that I really enjoy mm -hmm. that I never had any background in, but uh, I guess because of like being very nerdy about it and very and you know like out of like nature being more introverted and enjoying spending time on like one project mm -hmm. um, that got me maybe like uh, you know able to to do some some of the stuff that looks well for most people but but by no means I don't have any like you know very huge skill set it's always very specific to the project that I'm doing I have like the overall skill set but it's not very wide like people that study it you know mm. specifically that i see it's it's definitely very very impressive um do i watched the one arm uh the problem with the one arm pull up video that you made and did you do all the drawing and the animation yourself yeah yeah uh like this project so um like uh yeah when i say yeah by the way i'm just uh, i'm not answering the question but i'm like uh taking the question to myself and you know and uh taking taking the lead in the conversation mm, for that's this fine yeah <laughs> yeah um so for this project there were many people that took part into it um and since it was a lot of time ago already i cannot like talk about every single person mm. but uh, you have always uh, whenever from from now on whenever i do this kind of bigger project it's always on my website and you can always see like every credit every reference every study everything you can, you have listed there so for those interested um but when it comes to editing the only person that helped me was the animator uh, that I had, you know, like that, that I hired specifically for that project. But in the process, I also became kind of like uh, friends with him and he's like just helping me out with other things. Uh, and especially for this project, I'm also going to like that I'm doing currently. Also, we're going to need a lot of that. So most of the things that I can do, but I'm not doing like rigging. So like I cannot mm. like I don't spend I, I figured that it's not the best usage of my time to um, to like rig myself like the the three D uh, person for example. Mm. So that is like and then like animate this rigged character, but I can do like the animations with that after I receive it. So like I can then animate it in a in like making a scene out of it or like doing different stuff. Uh, with these objects, but I'm just not doing these objects myself, mm. if that makes sense. I see. Yeah, I know what you're saying. But all the other stuff, all the other like 2D stuff, uh, I'm doing it totally myself, which maybe some would say is not, you know, like um, the best system. And that obviously can be uh, deducted from the upload schedule of my videos. Uh, but at least until I enjoy it so much, uh, I think I'm going to just push it this way yeah that that's what that is what i was gonna say i mean it depends on how you look at it i don't think you can necessarily say that it's not worth your time because you enjoy it so much so um yeah yeah like it depends i had already you know like many thoughts about it and many conversations with people because obviously like as i um as i try to grow this and also like as it becomes a business Obviously, time matters a lot, mm -hmm. and yeah. if there are things that you can do better than others, uh, or like you can specifically do yourself, uh, that are like important and that are that you know that will benefit certain project, push it forward. Then this is something you should focus on, and you should you know 
as a business person, you should just delegate the other stuff to other mm-hmm. people. But there is the aspect of enjoying it. And what if, you know, like if I stop doing that, maybe I just stop enjoying it altogether. Yeah. And then yeah. and then nothing works, you know, mm-hmm. anymore because there is no passion in it. So I just, you know, like I am heavily inspired by YouTuber uh, known as Let Me Know. Let Me Know, I think. He is like the documentary YouTuber and he has been going for years and years. I think the, the highest quality documentaries on YouTube that there are. And um, he's like also doing it himself. I can see that. And I think that the big part of that is that he could like he could, you know, obviously have the 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 whole crew of animators and people that are doing it but it would not be the same for him Mm. i guess that's the case and i guess that's something that um i at least for now i cannot say for the future but for now i'm going to continue yeah it's definitely true that the upload schedule might suffer a bit when you do everything yourself i think we're starting to see you know there was a point in youtube especially where it was very crucial to upload very frequently I think we're starting to see creators put more work into one video and post less frequently than just mash out a ton of videos every single day. I um, So I cannot say that I have any data on that, obviously, and I don't know if that's actually occurring, but at least, you know, like from, from what I see, um, the uploads, like the upload schedule for me and my viewer is gonna hate me for that, but <laughs> at least for me, this is not the kind of like stressor for me that much. So like, I just don't consider the, the the time like between videos being massive problem because um, first of all, from the business perspective, I'm not actually, you know, like the vi- videos always gonna, like my videos will always be free and the content that I'm putting out. Mm-hmm. The way I'm, you know, like the, the way my income works is through then people that interact with this content, then they want to, for example, be coached by me or, you know, like buy some stuff. Um, so I'm not pressured in in its, in in terms of like ad see, revenue yeah. or something mm-hmm. like that. Right. But also I don't see that, you know, uploading rarely makes it worse in terms of like views or analytics. Like at least I did not did not notice that because once I do upload, there are always people watching that and they're like and the the channel was growing with each upload mm-hmm. so far yeah. for for last like few years, and uh, maybe that's you know maybe I'm I'm just lucky and like YouTube algorithm likes me, uh, but uh, I guess like when you produce high quality content, people will always just want to watch it, mm-hmm. and also it is evergreen because like it is always relevant obviously some minor things may change some data on stuff may be actualized but the main idea of the project and the main thing behind the project doesn't change and because it doesn't people will watch it will repeat watching it will share this video Um, so this is how i view things at this point in time i know people who have who are let's say in in quote unquote industry that have totally different opinion on that and they have totally different attitudes. Yeah. Um, and they chose and, and they have chosen completely different mo- model. Right. But for me, it's just like the, the thing that I enjoy. I, I would not enjoy it if I did like, you know, video every single week or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just what I do right now. And it's just like and YouTube is just a platform that I that I'm using because I just it suits the type of content that I'm doing. I'm not attached to like to 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 the you know to the outcome in terms of this platform. I see. Uh, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it does make sense. It's it's nice to have some freedom like that, I think. Especially um but I was gonna say, you know, look at Mr. Beast. He's the biggest YouTuber right now. He posts maybe once a month. So I, I feel like he's a living example of it's, it's not necessary to crunch out videos every single day. Yeah, and obviously here is like the disclaimer that it must go with like the, the quality. Mm. So, you know, like 
it's not to say that frequency itself is something that lower frequency is better. I would just say that at least like, and obviously I'm privileged because I don't have to like, they, they don't have to perform that well for me because I'm not like putting food on the table from ad revenue, mm, but there are mm -hmm. people that do and they have to think about it more. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I would say that um, for, for these people, um, frequency must go with like the quality, like there are, you know, they, so, so the lower, the lower frequency must mean that you are putting a bit more time into these videos. And this is why you're uploading less frequently, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. We're back. Everything seemed to go wrong today, Eric. <laughs> so the Sioux meeting had uh, a little, we mm -hmm. had a little problem with the Sioux meeting. It's good. I think everything should be good now. We can continue. I think it is like you can, you know, always edit this if you, if you want. So mm, no worries. Okay. So we were talking about like the frequency of uploading, the quality of, of making videos. I'm really interesting to interested to know like how long did your um, one arm pull up video take to make? Uh, so the video like from the scratch, from let's say from getting the idea of it, um, to let's say executing on that writing educating all that stuff uh, i think it took about yeah it took one year or like 10 10 to 12 months uh and i have to state here that it could take much less but with this kind of project it's always first of all the challenge of balancing like this with other things in life mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. you know like co like the, the the actual business like the, the the coaching business uh university you know and obviously just life in general like relationships stuff like that so this is part of the part of the reason and the second reason is that there was a lot of like many people um taking part in the project and many times i had to like wait for these people to mm. contribute in some way yeah. uh, and the last thing i would say is that it was and it was my mistake of like starting editing before having the full picture of the video which made me then getting back to certain things re like uh you know like redoing them and then changing and then going back which changed the the direction of the next one and there were so much of it that i decided that for the future projects I will start, you know, like with every single stage and at least maybe like maybe that's unrealistic, but I'm going to try at least to do it one by one. So like first yeah. reading, education, second writing and then, um, you know, and then editing and then putting it all together, etc. Um, so, yes, but it was like about one year. That is crazy. I don't think I've ever worked on a video for that long. That's that's very impressive. And plus, you were making other videos at the same time, right? Were you not posting? No. You were no, not? No. Uh, no, no, sorry. Like, I made a podcast with uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Mike Israetel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but this podcast I made somewhere at the beginning of last year. And, uh, and then I waited about two to three months with upload. Uh, and then I uploaded it on March last year, I think. And, uh, but in the process, I've been working on the video. So like, obviously podcasts takes a lot of time for me as well, because I also like, I always edit it a lot and put a lot of things, you know, it's, it's a different format, just, yeah. you know, like, mm -hmm. um, but, uh, the video itself, like the, the content that I would put on the, like on the, on YouTube, no, I did not do any other videos. I'm not really good at working on multiple things mm -hmm. at once, um, unfortunately. So, yeah. Yeah, I could imagine if you were making videos on the side beside that big video and as you said, your business, your school, it's like it's got to take a toll on toll on you. That's yeah, like, it would. It, it did anyways. Yeah. Like this project was very difficult, like mentally to I, I like, you know, when you put, let's say, a couple of months of work on something and then it turns out that let's say something is not working some you know like 
and it can be person, it can be program, it can be um, whatever, like everything. Um, it's very difficult because then you have this sort of thought that you want to quit, mm. but at the same time you've been all you already you've already put like four months into something, so um, it, it it really is difficult. Like I I'm doing all all the best that I can to avoid that and to like not let these projects take a toll on my mental health nowadays. But I know that it's a learning process as well um, because I have to say that um, I get quite obsessed with like one um, like with the project so I'm I'm reading on that a lot I'm like watching everything and everywhere that I'm let's say like going through my life I've the only thing that I see are like the opportunities mm. you know that mm. I see uh, I'm gonna give you one example like mm -hmm. funny story Please maybe do. not that funny but <laughs> um, so when I was working on that video I've been like uh, on the one arm pull-up video specifically I've been um, really like thinking a lot about the like the forearm and the range of motion in the forearm and like I've been thinking why pull-ups are so different than chin-ups in many ways and one of the things that I deducted was the like the that the for like that forearm uh, flexion might be um, reduced like the range of motion might be reduced uh, when you pronate your arm uh, and I saw like one study that would do it, but it was not enough for me. And for example, like when I was uh, in and in in school, we had these courses that are called gross anatomy, which is like you just basically have the um, surgeon or like uh, someone who is anatomy expert, and he is and usually medical doctor, and he's going through like the the real like human body, uh, like cadavers or cadavers, I should say. Um, and you're learning on like the the actual human body, like all the things. He's cutting human body, mm. showing the you know the bones, muscles, all these structures. And I will I remember like specifically asking him about like all these questions, just for the sake of like having you know just 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 looking at that uh, from like his perspective that he actually can see that and testing this range yeah. of motion of like the bone. In, in many ways. Um, so that's one of the examples, right? So like uh, many, many months I've been just thinking about one thing and how that can contribute to that. Um, it's it's nice, it, 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 uh, but it also, if you don't do it properly, it can just uh, have a toll on you um, because you just constantly, you're just in constant, you know, like urge to do something. Yeah that you can benefit from like this project like you're constantly questioning yourself if this can benefit the project you know many of this kind of like thoughts um but yeah but this is this is how it looked like that's amazing it must be such a relief to be done and release it but also kind of scary spending so much time on a project and then having to say okay this is finally it let's release it to the public very scary because the thing is um, that when you hit the upload button, um, like that's a gamble, you know, like you can make some mistakes that you did not see that you, you did. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, like let's say 100,000 people will watch it. Yeah. And you have to live with that at this point. Um, like obviously you could, you know, like redo the video and put it once again, but that, that would be not great for the algorithm. Like if, if, if you, you know, like, uh, re-uploaded all the videos just to make some sort of like correction in them, um, that doesn't work. Mm. Also, you don't know what are like the expectations getting higher with like every single month that you're not uploading. So you, you always, you always, there is always a little bit of worrying about like what, how people will receive that. Yeah. Um, and I always try to, you know, like, um, stay positive about it in regards to like, yeah, like you're doing something good, mm -hmm. but you never know. And, uh, especially with this project that I'm working on, I, I cannot tell much, uh, but, uh, also, I have these thoughts all the time. Like, is that really helpful for the community? Mm. Um, yes. And uh, just just one thing on that as well, that when you hit upload and you cannot change that, I try 
I still like put the corrections on my website. So if if there is something that I like learn new that I know that I could change, then I put uh, the correction on my on my website. But the truth is, how many people will see that, right? Mm, yeah. Like maybe maybe you know like some sort of like fraction of people will actually make the effort to look at the references, go to the link. So you have to live with that and you have to um, be, you have to do your best to provide the most accurate uh, content. Yeah. Like that, most accurate information, sorry. That's amazing. It's, it's very clear to see that you are obsessed <laughs> in, in finding <laughs> the most accurate information and and it really shows in the quality it, that's like it's both a, a downside as you said it can take a, a toll on your mental health but your obsession is obviously what creates that high quality content too thank you patrick like i, I appreciate that you that you think think this way you know like um if, if i have these sort of um like if i see that someone you know enjoys that that's obviously really great for me because i can see that it's not only for myself that actually some 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 person can you know like look at that and be you know like for example either enter entertained or informed educated mm -hmm. about certain topic yeah. i really appreciate um that that you're saying that it's well deserved all the kind words from not just me the fitness community as a whole it's, it's well deserved you do really good is it um is it hard for you to decide when a video is done or do you feel like you hit a point and then you just know it's done it's a great question uh, um you never you never hit the the point where it's done like when it's finished every single topic um could be taken from many more perspectives there are many more studies done on the topic usually many different you know like experts in a field with different opinions um and you just have to have that feeling where when it's enough mm. and that can mm. you know and, and it's it, it's an arbitrarily chosen moment uh based on some you know like some assumptions of yours but i would say that when i say to myself that the, that it's finished after that like i don't i i start just like not thinking anymore about the content of the video itself i try to think more about you know like okay like the video is done it's mm -hmm. finished yeah Can't do nothing about it what we can do right now to like continue the good stuff that can happen with that video meaning maybe i can do like a really good thumbnail maybe i can you know like maybe i can schedule its publish date maybe i can do some promotion videos maybe i can share it to some people uh, but you have to kind of like at certain point say stop yeah that's it because if you don't then you can always go and you can always find more perspectives yeah, it will you never always, end it will never end yeah and that's kind of like the nature of that right like um you never hit the point where you're ready um because the the fact is that it's not like done completely but you just have to you know like be uh, accept the fact that you're not gonna yeah. be able to do that um and that's the, the nature of of this type of work i'm getting better with that you know i think that this is one of the things that i'm actually getting better with um so but yeah but it's a very good question and i think that you can ask this question many different people that are doing anything that you know like requires um like a lot of work for one project yeah or like a lot yeah. of work for like one thing one um you know like maybe piece of art mm -hmm. same thing i i guess yeah i get a feeling you get very good grades in school uh not really like i would say that um like uh based on what <laughs> i i should say uh no like there were subjects that uh, were um preferable but i i did not like i did i appreciate the education like and the the formal education but um i don't think that i 
uh, enjoyed it that much, to no. be honest. No, no, like, and, and this differs from from person to person. Mm, I think that it's necessary. I definitely think that, you know, like formal education is something uh, like that gives you the overall view uh, and overall knowledge of everything. Like you mentioned before we started uh, talking, like uh, on the podcast, you mentioned traveling, right? Mm -hmm. I see mm -hmm. traveling as the same thing. It doesn't give you like the specific knowledge on something or like specific thing, specific tool, but it just makes you a more like well-rounded person. Yeah. And I yeah. think that with education is the same thing. Mm -hmm. I recommend mm -hmm. everyone reading the book Range by David Epstein. Um, this book is kind of like the, the representation of what I very briefly said here which means that um, looking at all the data and all the things, people that specialize early actually don't achieve in general such a success as people who are more kind of like generalists and then attempt many times with their spe specialization. Mm. Um, it was very interesting for me to read about different uh, areas of life where it applies not only to sport and to physical activity, but also to like economy, to, you know, um, to art, I think even like mm -hmm. to musicians. Interesting, um, interesting. Usually these people don't like choose the, you know, like their subject or like their, um, like their instrument and they just grind through it a lot. There are some, only some aspects of like some areas of life where it works like in sports maybe golf or like maybe um chess right so like stable environment promotes that but anything else that is like less stable that is less predictable it actually benefits from you being just overly um educated trained in many different fields many different ways and that gives you the the additional uh, benefit in when you actually do your specific thing um and i think that education in school is very important for that reason mm -hmm. i don't think that you know like um quitting school and starting a business is something that i would be grateful for if i did <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. i'm very glad that i did with the normal way um because you just like have these overall just just like traveling just like you mentioned before yeah. um yes like this is my current stance on this topic but myself I did not enjoy school that much no. so far. So do you don't feel like you could learn the same things from uh like from the internet for example? Like there as you mentioned um dropping out of school and starting a business, you wouldn't be satisfied with that, but there are a lot of people who turn out very successful who don't have a college degree who who study, you know, by themselves. Mhm. Mm yeah, like uh, obviously, for, first of all, when I when I talk about it, I'm no one qual qualified to to talk about it. So this is just only my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I think personally is that yes, there are people like that. But remember that always when you hear this kind of story, you hear this story, but you don't hear like stories of people who did go that route and, and they did not yeah. succeed. Yeah, that's you true. You, you're gonna only hear about success stories. So that's first thing. Second thing you mentioned college. I think that college is like optional. So college is not something that, you know, like, so if you want to do something like uh, with more, uh, like more specific, something that requires a lot of expertise, then most of the times college is beneficial not always like if you want to be physical therapist or you want to be medical doctor or you want to be lawyer you have to do that if you want to be someone who you know like do some freelancing work for editing for example i'm pretty sure that you don't need it and that you can learn it yourself um but we talk about college here so it's something that is more you know optional I would still say that college might have a lot of benefits like outside of that, maybe like social benefits. Um, and uh, but if we talk about like earlier education, I would say that people who drop out will be like massive outliers if they achieve success. Um, 
you know, and I may be wrong again, but this is just my stance on that. But it's a very interesting subject, very interesting topic. Um, that, uh, but yeah, but I myself am grateful for going with the classic route of like having, you know, normal education, choosing my degree and just pursuing it so far. But maybe it's uh, something that could go the other way and I would be more successful. Nobody mm. knows. No, I think I definitely think like the the lower education or what is it called? Like primary school, the first oh, like, yeah. first uh, 10 years of school that everybody goes through. I think those are probably pretty important because they help shape your interest because there's so much, so many different topics, so many classes uh of different types that really help you get general knowledge which i feel like is very important from a young age where i kind of um i have a i'm not sure what my stance on is on it but i feel like a lot that can be learned through education from the the upper education can definitely be learned uh, online nowadays i could be completely wrong um, I think that you're not wrong. If you look at that very in a very specific way, from a very like specific point of view, um, because yes, like I'm pretty sure that every single thing that you could learn, you could also read about and learn yourself. But um, and again, like I'm not disagreeing. I, I think that our you know stance on that is pretty similar in in terms of that primary school and like the the earlier education system is very important and then it's kind of like more optional mm -hmm. um, but I would still say that you know I know myself that if I had if I was given five years where I must study myself all the subjects I'm not sure if I did that you know like I'm not mm, sure that I, I would yeah. go through stuff that is actually uncomfortable for you because you know like it's easy for me to learn something that I'm interested in but the nature of any subject is that you have to go through things that are not that um, interesting or are not that motiv like motivating like you don't have so much self-determination for that mm. um, like intrinsic uh, motivation um, and for these things, it's very uh, it's very beneficial, I I think, to have some sort of um, outside pressure on you, um, especially if these things are like important, like in like medical school or something. Um, so yeah, so it's probably very complex subject, very nuanced, very multi-dimensional. Definitely. Um, yeah. But that's what I would say for like at, at least right now, I think that it's still beneficial. Yeah, and I guess also to say something positive about school, there's also you know the the curriculum, and maybe if you studied on your own, you might not know what you don't know. So you maybe not you might not be aware of what you'd have to look into and what you'd have to study whereas in school there's the set curriculum they know exactly what you'll be taught yeah yeah exactly and they and also you can always get back to that mm -hmm. you can always you know like even if you kind of like go through that very um just to pass and just to like get this degree you can you, you always have some sort of like way behind you yeah. So you always yeah. have something that you you went through and that you could, you know, like, con let's say that you can consider doing later on also, like, um, choosing to, to go into that subject. You have some literature. Yeah, there are many benefits. And obviously for some um, for some jobs or for some like areas of life, maybe that's not the case. Mm. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm a bit biased because of like what i'm doing and because of also like in my family there's like the many people went into science so maybe that's why you know like maybe that's why i'm i'm biased towards it maybe it's not the case for for many subjects hmm. and i feel like i might be a bit of a hypocrite because i am studying i am in school so of course i i i do feel like education is uh is beneficial for sure um you you said are you you're on your fourth year of 
physiotherapy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm finishing fourth year currently and going to enter the, the fifth year. Yeah, so like the master's uh, program last year. Okay, so the fifth year is your last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's, what's the next step for you after that? Um, a very difficult question that I myself like am contemplating about a lot. Uh, but I think that uh, I'm not putting like I don't want to put too much pressure on myself. What I what I want to do is just um, finish my like formal education studies, um, and for the time being, just continue with this what I'm doing, because that makes me you know like passionate uh, about things that I'm doing and like in general to mm -hmm. life. So I, I will do that, and it also you know like this is how I'm make my income and stuff. So I'm going to continue that. Um, but uh, after finishing, I might, you know, like, uh, I might pursue the academic, um, you know, like, um, academics in terms of like, maybe doing the like, doctor degree, mm, doctor, yeah. doctorate, yeah. maybe, I'm not saying that it's something that, you know, like, I'm very hyped about. But that's maybe something that I'm suit, suited for mm -hmm. most. Um, but definitely the plan for the next few years is to continue developing Frink's movement um, and definitely finishing the, the formal education of having the master's degree and potentially look and potentially working part time in physical therapy just to get some more experience nice i currently nice. do a little bit i currently do like a little bit and obviously we also have internships like you have right mm -hmm. um but yeah i i just like this is the advice that i got from daniel from fitness faqs by the way um like before we started on the podcasts he also went to physiotherapy school uh before that he also is like the the masters i think of physiotherapy and he gave me this advice that um yeah, because we have very similar like way of go like through things, right? Yeah. Because he also like started his like calisthenics business and channel and everything. Uh, when I think like uh, when applying for college or something like that, and he gave me the advice to be like more open to the like to this job anyways mm -hmm. and and starting from that because it's much easier to then after let's say three years if something negative happens uh which i gonna do everything not to uh let that happen but you know like sometimes it does unfortunately um so then it's much easier to like continue going through that and if you don't then you have like three or four years of not being in a field and then you're kind of like out. You yeah. have to like it's yeah. much. It's it's more difficult, right? Um, yeah. So that's the advice that he gave me. Mm. Uh, I don't know what's your stance on that uh, in regarding like your stuff, for for example, right? Like if you would have some uh, side side hustle, it's called, but like side pursue. Uh, would you say that it's like beneficial to like go all in on that, or would you still like? after finishing college, um, despite being in a position where, where you can quit, um, to still like pursue that job? What do you think about it? I think, it, you know, that it's, it's hard to say generally, it it's always comes down to the individual, very hard to say, I think it, it also depends on what you want. Of course, um, if you can support yourself off of Frank's movement, and you absolutely love that, I, I personally think I would go all in on Frink's movement, but if you feel like you have more that you want to learn, that you feel like education could give you, or maybe personal uh, therapy sessions, what is it called? Yeah, uh, more of that, yeah, like yeah. the physical therapy job, mm -hmm. or like working in a hospital or something like that, right? Yeah, if, if you feel like that could, could give you more, I, you should do that, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, and I agree. It's very up to individual. Uh, if any, if anyone is listening to that and you know, like, wonders about like his, like, path, um, I, I guess it's just like uh, it's also something that you can always, you know, like, th the option that I talk that I talked about, like, trying this like job, for example, 
it is always something that you can do for a very short period of time. You can at least try that yeah. two months. And if you really see that it's very, um, like very draining and it's taking away a lot of energy that you would like to spend on doing the stuff that actually interests you, then maybe it's a, it's a good time to quit. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's a very interesting, another very interesting topic. And I'm glad that you asked. Um, yeah, so far really enjoying this, uh, this, this podcast, by the way. So you, you're doing a really great job. I am too. I am too. It's, it's an awesome conversation. Um, something I am interested in though, is like the different educational systems around the world. How does, how does education like generally work in Poland? Yeah, it's very interesting because for example, I have, uh, my, cl uh, I have, I have a client in Australia uh and uh, the funny thing is that uh, we were talking a bit about it and how that kind of like differs between like for example poland and australia and you would think so because obviously how far away we are but yeah um the the, the major like in po I, I can only tell you how it is in poland so you have the primary school obviously then you have uh which is like right uh oh my god like i forgot it was um no, like I'm not going to say how many years it is right now. Okay. <laughs> uh, when I was going to primary school, it was six years. Okay. And then you had in the past middle school, three years and high school, three years. Right now, I think it's like eight years of primary school. They canceled the middle school and there is only high school for like four years. Okay. But maybe, okay. maybe the primary school stuff, I totally, you know, like said wrong. <laughs> uh, and I know nothing about the school system in my country. But um, the then what happens after high school, you write like an exam that is like the overall exam for like young people. Uh, and, um, um, and this exam uh, determines whether you're going to go to college or not because you choose your subject for me it was biology chemistry and like english on the extended level and everyone has to write basic level maths basic level polish language and basic language uh, so everyone okay. has to do that um but you uh, you you choose yourself what you want to extend based on where you want to go to college. I see. And then and then in in the college uh, you go for like three years bachelor, two years masters for most um, like most like subjects more most pursuits. Yeah. For physiotherapy specifically, it's only five years. You cannot do uh, three years anymore here. Okay. Uh, you can only go for five years. Um, and there are also like things like uh, law school and uh, no, like law is also five years only, but medicine is, for example, six years. Okay. Um, and that's it. You know, that that's how it works. Um, I think it's a good system like uh, right now, but obviously no system is perfect and it has many uh, different ways. I know in Australia, for example, they can choose and maybe that's like maybe I uh, that was my uh, not you know, like uh, my wrong listening skills. <laughs> um, but uh, from what I understood, it was like you can choose how how much time you want you want to put into, like for example, certain like university, and you can decide whether you want to do it faster or oh. slower, dependent on like like how much intensity you want to have. You know, that's so very like, interesting. Yeah, that's very interesting, mm. and I know that it doesn't work like you know like. It's not a, it's not a like pipe dream idea where you can like do whatever for like 20 years. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I would say that like some subjects it works, some subjects yeah. it doesn't. But maybe someone from Australia or like Alex, if you're listening to that, then you can definitely either punch me in the head for not listening <laughs> to you correctly or like someone may, you know, like elaborate on that. Very interesting. It is very fascinating. In Denmark, we have we just have one primary school. We don't have any middle school. I don't think we ever had. Um, and we go to the same school for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And after that, most people choose to go to a gymnasium, which is kind of high school equivalent. But gymnasium is for three years. You can also choose to do it in two years, though. 
but most oh. people do it in three years. And so you are about 18, 19 ish when you go out of gymnasium. And we don't really have any college equivalent. We don't have anything like that really here. So people go into what they want to specify. For example, I study marketing. So I chose a two year education in marketing after gymnasium. And then you can build up, up on that. I think what I have right now is the equivalent of an associate's degree. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I did not mention that like here you can also do like, for example, bachelor from one subject and masters from the other one. So it's also like, uh, you know, your preference, whether you want to pursue something mm. farther or like stop it. Um, if that was physiotherapy, um, like it was a couple of years ago, there's a high chance I would use like as my master's program, I would choose something else. Uh, like for example, um, the, like the uh, sports science maybe, or something like this, um, maybe. Uh, but I'm just like, I'm just saying that it also, but yeah, pretty interesting uh, that you can do two years instead of three years. That is like definitely uh, something that, you know, like I did not see anywhere. Um, but I understand that then the program is a bit more intense. If yes, you do it. of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That's okay. the thing. Yeah. Yep. Eric, this has been an absolute pleasure. Yeah. For me as well. I really enjoyed this conversation really great uh, questions that I, to be honest, like I, I don't get um, questioned about too much. Uh, so like it was very nice to to speak about these things. I usually get, uh, you know, asked about, um, yeah, asked is the, is the word. Um, I don't get asked about, you know, like personal stuff or like the, 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 the background of the project and of like the Frinks movement work, which was very nice to talk about. Um, and at least my attitude for now. So thank you so much, Patrick, for inviting me and for doing this uh, podcast in such a good way. I, I wish that, you know, like, I, I hope that everything's gonna uh, go really well with that. And you're gonna get, you know, an, uh, like some amazing guests uh, in the near so future. Much. I really appreciate it. I'm very glad that that you had a good time as well. And we have to do this again sometime. And, for sure like if you and, if you ha ever like want to invite me again I'm, I'm very up for it awesome and hopefully it will go better next time with the technicalities <laughs> yeah that's that that is the one thing that could go better definitely yeah so before we end it go ahead plug anything you want to plug oh yeah for sure yeah so like um if you're interested in uh looking for some like calisthenics documentaries uh frinks movement tv on youtube um there is the the website frinksmovement.com that is the natural extension of that channel you can look at the project look at the references credits um, etc uh, or corrections um on that website you can also apply for my online coaching program you can get a program for me consultation um and also i do some Instagram posts from time to time, uh, but it's very rare. Uh, but if you want to contact me personally, I would uh, suggest this medium. And the last thing that I can say is that I don't have TikTok, but I do write monthly articles for the Gornation company. Oh. So if you go to their blogs, you can see like currently free articles uh, that are signed with Frink's movement. So you can you definitely invite you to um, to look at them because I take a lot of time to write them as well. Um, and they seem to be pretty interesting for most people. Um, so that would be enough of like the promotion stuff. Uh, thank you so much for this uh, opportunity once again and really enjoyed the, the talk, like I said. Amazing. Thank you so much for coming on. And thank you to the viewers, the listeners for tuning in as always. Liking, commenting, subscribing, all that good stuff. Appreciate it. See you next time. Peace.